Hello friends, I am Dr. Himanshu Pandey, Assistant Professor, School of Law, Devi Ahilya University, Indore. This module, Methods of Data Collection, contains study materials on various scientific methods of data collection used for legal research. Their procedure have been discussed with the examples contents del under this module will be explained by this lecture. Objective of this lecture is to develop the fundamental knowledge of data collection process by understanding of basic scientific methods used for data collection in research so that you can perform research work by using these methods. Research is a logical and systematic search for new and useful information on a particular topic. What data is to be collected, where data will be found, how data will be collected and analyzed are certain important questions implicit in every research study. The methods of procuring data for research is an independent segment of research design. Procedure used for data collection is extensively scrutinized if researcher does not possess this knowledge of dealing with the data at various stages, each of which may be the question of validity and reliability. Inaccurate data collection can impact on results of a study and ultimately lead to an invalid result. There are various facts, data and information relating to result topic available in this world. Researcher is required to make the proper objective, logical and authoritative decision that what facts may be relevant for his study or not. After selecting a principle of data collection, consistent application of methods and standards within the method must be developed. So that measurement clearly reflect intended variable and is not biased by the methodology employed. The term method and methods and methodology are frequently used in the context of legal research. They are sometimes used in interchangeable manner, but they are slightly different things. Therefore, it is important to explain both terms methods and methodology. The term method defined in Oxford English Dictionary as a specific form of procedure or characteristic set of procedures employed in an intellectual discipline or field of study as a mode of investigation, inquiry or of teaching and exposition. Where the term methodology means techniques or group of methods employed in a particular field of study or activities. In the context of this module, we are primarily concerned with the methods of data collection commonly used in legal research math field. Methods of data collection in legal research have their distinct methodology. Methods and methodology followed in research depends on some questions necessary to be answered first. As to the nature of data, their collection method and analysis process, which may differ from one stream to another. Whereas in legal research field, research process is centering between two methods, doctrinal method and empirical method. Method of data collection can be classified on following broad aspects as the nature of research problem and research objectives, second authority of data, third is the reasoning followed in data collection. On the basis of these three considerations, research method of data collection applied in legal research may be classified as doctrinal an empirical data method, primary and secondary method, and inductive and deductive method. 
doctrine and method meaning of doctrine is necessary to understand the approach of doctrinal method for data collection term doctrine is latin term which means a codification of beliefs or of a body of teaching or instructions taught principles or propositions as the essence of teaching in a given branch of knowledge or belief system a belief or beliefs accepted as an authoritative by some groups or schools belief is a cognitive process it, it contain the approach towards the truth in a general sense whatever is taught or laid down as a principle or true by any authoritative or credible source of is considered as doctrine doctrine is also used in english jurisprudence to refer the principles of law in the common law traditions established through a history of the past decisions such as the doctrine of self defense or the principle of fair use ultimately object of data collection is to ascertain either factual or philosophical information doctrinal method suggests if such factual or philosophical information are available with religious political scientific educational and legally authoritative and credible source like scientists religious texts masters educationists jurists and academic judges and academicians these informative sources can be the good source of data collection so as to meet out the objective of research doctrinal research is possible only where relevant and sufficient information exists and available on research topic the information coming from credible source is assumed true unless he has reason or scope of doubt as to the truthness of such information credibility of source is very important to consider any information through doctrinal method though the credibility of source is the thought of personal nature but it should be objectively satisfied a standard of credibility of source of information may be decided on the basis of its authority experience knowledge and other relevant considerations data processing under a doctrinal approach can be observed as a information coming from a credible source and the, that information is relevant towards the study in hand and there is no scope of doubt as to the truthness of such information such data is admissible through doctrinal method and such data can be used and relevant for further research purpose basic source of data collection in doctrinal legal research are the library methods participation and publication of published data participation method direct attending with physical presence in any lecture in seminar conference or through the participation observation of any proceeding of judicial legislative or administrative action their recording in written and electronic format can be the manner of collecting data through doctrinal research method public publications published means are usually used as a good source for data collection in doctrinal research method like books journals reporters magazines newspapers and juristic work which are easily available in the library of educational and other official institutions reports of seminar conference symposium or of any legislative judicial or administrative proceeding if published in any documentary form can be a credible source of information for doctrinal research any other literature containing factual and philosophical information 
like article, research papers, thesis or dissertations. Reports, judgments and commentaries and case law are also the common source used for data collection in doctrinal method. Next to doctrinal method, another is empirical method, where the researcher has no option to proceed his research through the doctrinal method or where he is not willing to consider the data on the basis of informative source. According to objective and purpose of his research, he prefers to go with the empirical method. Empirical method is also known as non-doctrinal method. It is the source of knowledge by data acquired, verifiable and provable by means of observation or ex experiment. Researcher relies on his own experience with the facts and variables observed by him in real social condition. Empirical data is more authoritative for research other than doctrinal one because empirical data is directly observed by the researcher in the society. Whatever experience analysis he has, he further proceeds on the basis of his own understanding and experience. Whereas in doctrinal method, the overall, overall process of research depends on the informative source. If data is anyway irregular, imperfect at the informative source itself, in that case, it shall affect the results of the in present which is beyond the control of researcher. Such errors cannot be corrected in doctrinal research if the information is wrong or misleaded in that case whole research shall be go on the wrong path. In empirical method research output is solely depends on skills and quality of researcher and or investigator. Empirical data collection is made by the researcher or investigator through his own observational and analytical skills. Self satisfaction, empirical data collection is made by the researcher or investigator through his own observational and analytical skills. Self satisfaction of the researcher as to the reliability, relevancy and authority of the data is must for admissibility of any data through this process. Empirical method is usually preferred with new research problem, where no previous information is available in the mar market in the society. In that case, the researcher has only option directly collect that da raw data from the society and analyze, analyze them according to the methods used for the data processing through scientific applications. Sometimes past theory suggestions or assumptions become defective or insignificant due to the changing social variables and social phenomena, due to the changing social environmental and other factors and other more modern technology, the old theories, assumption and the principles are outdated. In that case, relying on doctrinal source cannot be good for the objectives of research. After keen and skill analysis, new theory can be propounded properly by using this empirical method so that the social problem can be appropriately resolved. There are certain common techniques which are used for empirical research like observation, interview, questionnaire, schedule or case study methods. These techniques are further sub classified on the basis of the nature of and object of data collection. In empirical method, the data processing is aligned in a particular direction. First, the researcher has to observe the facts. After analyzing those facts through the scientific process, he realizes 
with his satisfaction as to the existence of fact and after his satisfaction the data can be accepted for research purpose. Empirical method is a factual investigation and philosophical conclusion. Whether facts are observed, analyzed, realized and after their due satisfaction accepted and processed for the research purpose. After this analysis and focus on methods on the basis of the nature of data, the second classification of methods can be held on the basis of authority of data, authority of source from where data obtained by the researcher. On the basis of the authoritative source, it can be classified between primary and secondary data or the primary and secondary source. In legal research process, there are various sources available for data collection, but weightage of information for making any inference or making any principle or proposition, the weightage of individual evidence or data can be considered on the basis of the authority of source. If requisite data is obtained from the authoritative source, it has more weightage rather than the data collected from other methods from non-authoritative sources. On the basis of research data can be classified into primary data and secondary data. Primary data is the data or information collected by researcher directly from his own observation. Facts which are directly collected by researcher in the society through his direct hard working towards discovery of facts are collected as primary data. Any information obtained from the person who has transacted an, any phenomena of facts or who has participated in that transaction or phenomena or who is the witness of that transaction and phenomena directly gathering the information from that person is the primary data and that person is the primary source he is the direct source of information who has accepted perceived the information directly and other than the direct observation of fact any source of information which provide the information from indirect method that is the secondary method. In primary method, data can be collected from such person who is the eyewitness of any such event which is subject matter of research. And he can be expected to share true information known to him which can be relevant for the research. Similarly, with the philosophical and theoretical information, deposition of the person who has such philosophical concept, such theoretical concept, he can share that philosophical and theoretical concept formed by him that shall be considered as primary data. In doctrinal legal research, basic authoritative sources of development in the field of law are considered primary sources as legislative enactments, judicial decision and customs, the law emanating directly from the competent authority is termed as authoritative source and authoritative sources are bind, binding in force. In present time, legislation and judicial precedents are the foremost primary source of law. So far as customs are concerned, it depends on the circumstances and nature of the custom in individual case. After the primary data, the second category of data on the basis of authoritativeness that is the secondary data. All such information data facts which are gathered through non-authoritative source is considered as secondary data. Secondary data is always second to the primary data. 
where the information is not av available with the primary source, primary source cannot be searched. In that case, the researcher has to compromise to gather the information through the secondary source. In comparison between the primary and secondary source, both these sources have their own importance in legal research. Sometimes secondary sources are also used for the explanation of any term, any context used in the primary source. Admissibility of data from secondary source is assumed on their reliability only. Commentaries, digests, encyclopedias, treaties are regarded as the secondary source of law. And secondary source of law is not the authoritative, it is only of the persuasive nature. Any information which is of the persuasive nature that can be considered for the research but after the keen and due investigation as to the truthness the reliability and validity. Ordinarily, secondary source is available through various sources. We are finding of primary data is not much easier and not economic to access. After primary and secondary sources, another method which is used applied for data collection that is the reasoning method or logical reasoning. Basically no fact occurs incidentally or in vacuum. Every fact has the concern with the other fact. Any such problem which is studied by the researcher for his research purpose, he should collect the data and information for the research after analyzing the logical relationship of that information with the existing problem theory of phenomena. For establishing that relation between the problem and data collected therefore, it requires the reasoning, legal reasoning, rational reasoning. That means the decision or the logic applied reason given or any argument given for the admissibility or rejection of any information should be good. Every incident fact or transaction has the correlation with other facts. Such relation can be established only by establishing the logical relationship. If researcher wants to establish any causal relationship between two variables, he must to have to go for logical analysis and understanding, so that he can decide what information is relevant in the matter or what is not. If researcher has no logical answer to establish the relationship, he should not consider that data for the, the research purpose because that information has no reliability and validity. The logical reasoning does not from come from the quantity of data, it comes from the quality of data which can establish the sound and logical relationship between the data and the hypothesis or the problem thereof. On this basis, on the basis of legal reasoning, there are three common patterns or approach of reasoning. One is inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning and third the which is the derivative of these two that is abductive reasoning. This third method has been recently introduced in the research field. The first approach inductive reasoning is used as a method 
of for decision taking for collecting any data. This is the inductive method. Inductive is a reasoning proceeding from particular facts to general conclusion. This is a way to make sense to think by making a special observation of facts and drawing a conclusion based on those observation. Observation of relevant facts from fragmented data of facts and after collecting those data certain idea or general principle which can be formed for the research problem that is the inductive or in we easy way we can say that where the researcher has no previous knowledge experience as to what data is required whatever information or fact come across to him in the course of data collection he has to decide induce that information for his problem and after establishing the logical relationship of that fact with the problem or high or principle he comes to form any theory principle or to form any assumption this inductive reasoning starts from the data collection second state is the data analysis and after analyzing the data any theory can be propounded this reasoning method is applied where researcher does not possess the basic knowledge as to the problem where he is not able to form any working theory principle or assumption then he moves to induce approaches in such cases the researcher usually form the null hypothesis or research question rather than going with any research hypothesis because research hypothesis always asserts the relationship which can be verified by the other evidences collected therefore after collection of data if any pattern emerges which suggests the relationship of variables between the variables such observation can be used to construct any possible generalization relationship can be beneficial to construct any theory or philosophy through inductive method the researcher move towards discovering new theory or principles which is verified for further research work or further operational purpose this theory comes after the observation of facts and reasoning process applied for this data collection approach is called the inductive reasoning after inductive reasoning there is another approach that is the deductive reasoning deductive method is contrary to object uh, inductive method where the researcher is already acquainted with the research problem he has certain evidences to form any assumption certain theory or proposition exists for him which can guide his research towards a particular direction or where he collect the data on the basis of the form hypothesis that is the deductive method selection of data from innumerable facts in the this world is a very difficult task for making research easier it is better that certain indicators can be formed on the basis of possess knowledge theory or principle therefore on the basis of experience or knowledge some theoretical approach idea 
or assumptions are already prepared by the researcher which are reflected in the hypothesis formed by him. Under focus of hypothesis certain indicators or key terms are determined by the researcher. Those key terms and indicators are used to search data relating to research problem in hand. Deductive method moves towards the hypothesis testing of principal confirmation or rejection. Ordinarily hypothesis are structured to establish the relation correlation between two variables facts or concepts. And this deductive method suggests the way of investigating the facts in the light of such hypothesis. In the deductive method it is predetermined that what data is required to be investigated for the particular research. And on the basis of that investigation the concept of relationship is approved or disapproved by the research. In this method the research starts with the theory and that theory suggests predicts as to the existence of the relationship between the variables. By this research the data is tested to prove or disprove such relationship of variables. For deductive reasoning certain concepts elements are necessarily to proceed with this reasoning that is experience, knowledge, theories and hypothesis. On the experience certain knowledge or gatheration of the information certain knowledge is formed. With the synthesis of experience and knowledge any hypothesis can be propounded and that hypothesis is the directive to collect the data for research this is all the deductive reasoning. After inductive and deductive reasoning the third method which has been introduced by the Charles Sander Pearson. Pierce has introduced this theory that is abductive method and abductive method is the mixed form of inductive and deductive method. The abductive logic of research was formulated with this assumption that no fact cannot be ignored in the process of discovery in science leaving it to the history of facts. In the process of discovery whatever new facts informations interacted with the researcher he should not in ignore such new information merely on the basis of indicators decided by him by following his deductive approach. The process of discovery that intends to provide the explanation of a new and surprising fact is called the abduction. Basically this method suggests that any new fact or surprising fact which can be relevant for the research has to be considered and examined properly and thereafter any inference can be drawn. This is the in between approach between inductive and deductive method where the researcher starts researching on the basis of information in his hand. But that information is not that much perfect or sufficient to form any deducive theory or what we can say on the basis of incomplete information, incomplete theory, any provisional hypothesis can be formed and that provisional hypothesis is directed and further investigation is made on the basis of that direction and thereafter if any new fact 
come across or found in the research that has to be accepted in the stock of knowledge and after accepting and analyzing the new and surprising fact which was not anticipated by the researcher earlier that can give the new dimension to the existing assumption, supposition or the theories. This abductive logic is applied in such cases where the researcher does not possess the sufficient information to form any perfect hypothesis. Whatever partial information he has, he proceeds with that partial information and in between any new data is also induced by the researcher. The indicators of abductive reasoning are basically used for the, with this process, but the approach of inductive method that is the open to accept the facts that is also maintained with this research process. Abductive reasoning can be processed on the basis of knowledge, experience and probationary hypothesis. And after this second stage any new fact which is not known or not anticipated if found that is accepted and on the basis of that new knowledge the previous knowledge is improved or modified. This is the abductive reasoning process. After the whole discussion over the methods of data collection process applied therefore, focusing on various aspects and material relating to this method of data collection especially in legal research. At last, I am going to summarize the whole lecture as the data collection is an important phase of research design. Before data collection an ideal approach has to be drawn by the researcher that what data is to be collected, how data will be collected. For taking the decision of data collection researchers should consider the nature of data, sources of information, authoritativeness of informative source, their reliability and the logical reasoning which is necessarily be applied for every research process. In legal research there is the combination of the all three methods whether it is the method of do, or doctrinal or empirical as to the sources of data whether it is the primary or secondary or the math approaches whether inductive, deductive or abductive. And after analyzing all we can come to conclusion that all the methods are proper appropriate for the data collection, but it should be focused in the light of research, problem, hypothesis and availability of the resources. Thank you and goodbye.